Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you see, I changed up my setup a tiny bit. Um, this is the studio I usually work in, so I just wanted to show you how I exist basically on a daily basis when I work. Today I'd like to talk to you about retouching um, natural light portraits. Um, the other day I did a vlog from this shoot. So this is an image that I took um, maybe two months ago. And um, as you see, we only use natural light. Um, so I kind of want to show you what I do to make the images look the way they do. I hope you actually like the vlog. If you haven't seen it yet, have a look here. Or I'll try to put it here anyway. <laughs> um, so let's get right into it. Okay, so I'll start with creating a new layer. And um, as you see yourself, um, Talia has lovely skin. There isn't too much texture to it. Um, she has a lovely um, golden glow about her. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab my brush. I want the flow to be very subtle. So maybe like literally um, one or two percent. And I want very subtly go over the skin. So just wherever I see any imperfections or, you know, maybe not even imperfections, any maybe like slightly different color on the skin or maybe a slightly darker patch. Okay, so now that I pretty much have the skin dealt with, I know it wasn't a lot. So I'll go and do dodge and burn now. So I'm going to go alt, new layer, um, soft light, and then click uh, fill with 50% gray. Okay, so I'm going to add um, slight highlights and shadows into the face. I'm going to add a bit more highlights into the hair just to kind of make it look a bit more glowy and a bit more goldeny. Okay, so I'm going to grab the white brush. I'm going to leave the flow at two as I had the other brush and I'm going to go over the cheekbone highlight. Maybe the nose. It's pretty much like contouring in Photoshop. So if you're a girl and you contour your face, this is pretty much the same thing. You pick the highlight places, so let's say top of your cheekbones, um, maybe Cupid's bone, um, you know, top of your nose. Basically, all you do is contour with light. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the lighter parts of the hair, just to kind of give it a bit more definition and dimension. Okay. It doesn't need too much. Okay, so I'll leave that for now. I might actually add a tiny bit more on the eyelid, actually. So I'll just add a tiny bit more highlight on the eyelid, and that's it for now. Okay, so next on, I'm going to grab the curves layer and do my usual um, highlights and shadows. So just add a tiny bit of highlights. You have to watch the dress because the dress is quite light. So um, as you see, the highlights are overexposing it a tiny bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply the highlight to the image the way I want to and then just mask out the skirt so it's not too um, burnt out. And then I'll just add a bit more um, shadows. Okay, and then I'm going to mask out the dress. I'm just going to increase the flow for that. So I'm impatient. Okay, I'm just masking out quickly. Just the areas that you see that are the kind of most exposed. Okay, so now I can move on to my contrast curve. Again, um, I will go quite low with the contrast because you don't want it looking too crazy. Um, the whole the whole theme was kind of like feminine and you know and it was for autumn winter but it was still quite florally and a kind of summery so um, I want to kind of keep it that way okay that's about enough perfect now um, now that I have that I am going to go into my exposure and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of offset maybe plus 84 and then I'm going to go into gamma correction and just make it a little bit darker as you see it gives the image the kind of nice moodiness about it um, it's kind of goldeny and warm and creamy and that's the kind of thing that I want from the from the images to 
hue saturation and because we're shooting for autumn I would kind of like the leaves to be a bit less green and a bit more yellow so I'm going to go into minus 11 in hue and then what I'm going to do I'm, I'm going to mask it out and then use the white brush and go very loosely over the green area um, because I'm not changing the color too much I don't have to be particularly careful with how I apply the color um, obviously if the difference in the image was quite drastic then I would probably try and mask it out but it's just way too much effort for what it is so as you see there's a slight bit of a difference between the colors um, I might actually saturate it ever so slightly I don't want to go overboard because I don't want it to be too in your face maybe just a tiny bit like plus five is enough okay now I'm going to go back to Talia's face and I might I apply a tiny bit more highlight there you go, I'll go a tiny bit on the lips, on the chin, on the cheekbones. I really want that highlight to stand out on her cheek because I think it just looks so nice. I'll add a tiny bit on the ear as well. Go over a couple times the, over the hair and now I'll show you a little before and after. So we did change quite a bit without really changing much, if you know what I mean, because um, we left the skin pretty much as it was. We just smoothed it out ever so slightly. We added a, a bit of highlight and we just changed, uh, you know, hue saturation and curves. And this is pretty much it. Um, what I'll do, I'll just sharpen a tiny bit. Perfect. And the only thing I've seen now while sharpening is those little brow hairs that are standing up a bit too much. So I'm going to just deal with that quick. You see those little brow hairs here. I know that they were supposed to be brushed up, but, um, but I just don't want them to be looking too crazy. So I'll just grab my stamp tool and I'm just going to go over them ever so slightly. Perfect, and I'm actually seeing a tiny little spot there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. It's a tiny bit of texture by her nose, so what I'm going to do, I'm either going to grab a little stamp tool, and the flow, as you see, is very low, it's only at 16, so I can kind of just go over the line here. So, I'm doing that without changing too much of the texture or anything. Okay, now the last thing I might do is I might grab the hue saturation layer, or sorry, um, dodge and burn, and I'm going to grab the black brush, and now that we deleted or got rid of some of the little hairs on her eyebrows, I'm going to add a tiny bit on the end of her brow, just because it just looks a tiny bit um, bare. So I'll put my flow up a tiny bit. So as you see, the little before and after, those are very simple settings, you know, it's just two curve layers, exposure layer and hue saturation. So that's all I needed to kind of make my image nice and maybe not moody, but it's just, it just gives it a nice feel about it. So um, I'll show you a bit of a bigger close up. So you can see there's quite a difference. Okay, I hope you like this video. Um, as you see, I kept it quite simple. I just wanted to give it this nice autumnal feeling without being too cold and wintry because when I shot it, it was still kind of break of the season. So I did want to keep that feeling in my photo. So I did want it to feel autumnal, but I did want it to feel kind of summery as well. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and I will have a new video with you every Monday and Thursday. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs>